It's good to see you again, Representative. Let me just ask you point blank. You, you pointed out to them that, uh, I'm going to butcher the quote, the banks recovered, but the average borrower didn't. But I think there are a lot of people who would say no, a lot of average borrowers have recovered. What was the basis of your question? Well, the basis of it was my district, uh, where I know there are a number of individuals who lost their homes. Uh, particularly when uh, they were the no doc loans and or the adjustable rates uh, and they have not recovered. Uh, they are now permanent renters or trying to you know uh, get their uh, resources back together. They lost their wealth uh, because one of the biggest areas of wealth building was home ownership uh, and so they are still recovering uh, in, in that regards. They were not bailed out nor you know and I don't have a problem what we did with the banks but when you look at the homeowners um, they did not get the kind of relief given the scenario that, uh, uh, and that's what I was trying to get people to pay attention to because these are very real people who uh, put, you know, their largest investments were in their home and then they lost their home and they were put out on the street. And so there should be something, that I think, uh, done to try to figure out, even in the toughest of times when you have a good customer, some, uh, some um, mediation, some other type of methods that we can do to keep a person in their home while they continue to recover. And uh, Congressman, you also talked a lot with the bank CEOs about the issue of trust, that there still is a trust problem when it comes to the American public and uh, U.S. banks. Do you think something like what you're proposing could be helpful? I mean, what, what else needs to be done here? And is it on the bank CEOs or is it on Congress to try to sort of repair that relationship? Well, I think that the banks should do it. Uh, it's important because we can't get rid of the banks. I'm not one to say get rid of them and break them up and things of that nature. They are important to our economy. They're important to the city of New York. Uh, but the banks have to make an effort so that we can change the paradigm of what took place in 2008 where too many people were hurt. Uh, where we looked at the, as I said, the, the no-doc loans uh, for you know, mortgages and individuals are spurling in debt. Uh, so I would think that the banks can come up with some programs uh, and some of the small and community banks, they're doing just that. They're recreating ways of which they can attract customers, but the customers are also feeling that these banks are part of their community. And that then, that builds up the sense of trust in working together. I always use as an example, my parents, it was a small bank, but they looked at the entire scenario with my parents and my parents felt in, you know, emboldened by the bank who was going to make sure that they could have an opportunity to buy a home uh, and, uh, and made you. sure that they had rates that they could afford. So Representative Meeks? That's what I'm talking about. Uh, it's, it's Mike Mayo, a bank analyst here. Uh, yesterday I was at the Bank of New York annual meeting uh, and the Reverend Jesse Jackson was there talking about the disparity gap. And what I uh, said to Reverend Jackson, I said to the CEO and the board, I said, in three decades of analyzing banks, I've never spoken to one investor that's cared about diversity, not one. On the other hand, I'd say almost every investor really cares about you know, modern thinking, innovation, vibrancy, being ahead of the times, and diversity as a means to actually help a company perform. How would you propose me reconciling those two thoughts. On the one hand, people don't actually bring up diversity as an owner of a stock. On the other hand, they want all the other things that diversity involves. Well, I think that if you look at some of the uh, uh, governments, for example, I know in the city of New York, they're starting to ask the question about what's the diversity with reference to the various companies because it is their, it's the people's money that are being invested therein. In fact, I have a bill in that regard because it's good business also. When you look at uh, individuals who, whether it's pension funds, etc., uh, you know, it's, it's a diverse pool of individuals. Uh, and so it then would make good business sense to me when you have that kind of diversity, whether it's on the board of directors or in the C-suites, because then they also understand various communities and how to do business in those communities, which will then enhance the business aspects of the financial institutions also. So I, diversity I, is not just something good socially, I think it's good business-wise, it's good business. And I'd say I think the one, one key word that showed up in both the testimony uh, for the Bank of America CEO um, and uh, the J.P. Morgan CEO is the word partnership. And so you're hearing that from banks much more. And 
I personally thought that banks are moving ahead on diversity based on the numbers, the percentage of the board uh, that's diverse, percentage of senior management that's, di that's diverse, certainly still a ways to go to match the U.S. population. But from my uh, more layman perspective, I thought that banks are making progress there. Did, did you, do you agree with that, even though there's more to go? Well, there's a long way to go. Are they better than they were 20 years ago? Absolutely they're better. And I think some of the reason is why is the continued pressure that we are being, that's being applied and, and, and individuals Meeks? understand the business aspect of it also. Um, I, I'm going to ask a question along these diversity lines because one of your colleagues asked this question looking at the all-white, all-male CEOs who were there. We have had you know, Richard Parsons, who's no longer the CEO or the chairman over at Citi, but there have been people, uh, certainly not representative of the population, but there have been CEOs at major institutions which had big trouble who weren't necessarily white and male. So what do you think when you looked out at that panel of all-white male CEOs? Well, what I thought was we need more people in the channel. When I listened to how long each of them had been with their various financial institution, they had been there for a while and they were able to move up uh, in the system to become the CEO. Uh, and the best way to do that is to make sure that you are recruiting folks and you're putting folks in lead management positions, in the C-suites, et cetera, so that they can excel uh, and can grow and, be, and become the CEOs. And whether you're talking about uh, people of color or women, that needs to happen. And we've seen in other companies where you have that kind of diversity, you've seen individuals, you know, uh, you know with, with the opportunity in those businesses excel. So I think that that needs to happen. We should see uh, that kind of diversity. And I would hope that the board members, if you think that if the board is diverse, which is why I think the board diversity is important, then the likelihood of making sure that you're opening up the spectrum of who is your CFO and who's your CEO uh, becomes greater because you have greater voices and greater diversity on the board itself. Congressman Meeks, Julia LaRoche here. Uh, you all are bringing up a lot of issues uh, from the compensation, diversity, you name it. And a lot of people have wondered why didn't we have a hearing like this before the financial crisis? I think they are grateful that we are having this hearing. My question for you though is how do you hold the banks accountable for some of these topics that we're talking about? Will you have more hearings in the future? Is this something you could see uh, becoming somewhat of a tradition? Well, absolutely. I'm chair of the subcommittee on financial institutions, consumer protection and financial institutions. I can guarantee you that my subcommittee is going to be focused on this and going to have, I have follow-up questions to the panel that is there. I'm going to be engaged with them. Uh, in fact, a number of those CEOs were engaged and they met with me privately in my office before the hearing and we will be following up with them after the hearing also. Uh, this is not something that's going to be just this hearing and then it's over. Uh, that is my responsibility to make sure that we're actively engaged with the financial institutions, be they big or small. All right, Congressman, thank you very much for your time. And as this process continues into the future, we look forward to talking to you again. New York Congressman Gregory Meeks, appreciate your time. My pleasure. Good being with you.